Yeah, not all of these cryptos are gonna make it. Not at all. As a matter of fact, there will only be 1%. More precise math will actually give you a much smaller number. Well, we don't have time for that. What I'm getting at here, guys, I wanna share with you what I'm working on. I'm working on a video for the DHN Crypto Docs channel. I decided to put this on the channel, on the Docs channel, because it's it, it got deep. What I'm looking at here are moments in history where this has happened before, what we're going through, the longest bear cycle in recorded crypto history. There have been three other groups of people who have gone through what we have gone through as investors, as enthusiasts. I'm talking about the phone industry, the early phone industry, uh, phone carriers, the video game industry, and the early social media companies, right? Boom and bust cycles is kind of what I'm getting at here. But as I'm doing the digging, and you can see, I got the, I got the documentation right here. As a matter of fact, I'm sure we going behind the scenes. Going behind the scenes, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I got my paperwork. I got my information, you know, putting it all together because this uh, is wild. <laughs> this is wild. So long story short, we're about to enter a period in this market None of, none of these coins are going to survive. There will be, right now, there are 20,000, okay? CoinGecko lists about 10. Uh, for whatever reason, coin market cap is showing 1.3 million. Not sure what's going on there. But like I said, only 1% can survive. When you compare us to the traditional markets, I believe there are less than 6,000 companies listed between the stock exchange and the NASDAQ. I'm not including maybe any global exchanges, but I'm just giving a rough estimate here. That's still significantly lower than what we're dealing with, right? So I'm thinking on all of this, going through this bear cycle, right? And I'm like, where has this happened before? Because we know history may not repeat, but it does rhyme like an MC. So I do the digging, I get the looking, right? And I pull those three uh, moments in time. Early phone industry, I'm just gonna share just a couple details with you. So without going too deep, all right, Alexander Graham Bell gets the patent in 1870. He held it down for about 20 years. By 1894, the patent expired. That's when a flood of companies came into the market. Everybody wanted to be a phone carrier. However, they could only use the technology, the landlines that AT&T had already established prior to that, right? This is the exact same thing that occurred in 2009 when Satoshi gave us Bitcoin. By 2012, he had essentially left the entire market, left the industry, left the space. And in that time, there were hundreds, thousands of duplicates, okay? They were all trying to be proof of work. They were trying to be the next Bitcoin, fast this, fast that. Uh, well, it was, no, because it was after 2014 that we started to get the names we're familiar with, your Ethereums, your XRPs, your Stellars, right? Because that's a form of distributed ledger technology. That's not blockchain, okay? So understand my correlation here. Bitcoin is to blockchain with AT&T, what's to landlines, right? Funny enough, 1905, there's uh, research about Nikola Tesla. He found a way to do it wirelessly using cell phone towers. <laughs> that sounds a lot like the alternative DLT, right? Same surface technology, two different aspects, two different variations of it. That's just one comparison because after that, there would be the Great Depression. That was the crash that kind of shook the phone industry. After that is when you started to see AT&T incorporating wireless technology. Right, I'm, uh, I got my notes up here, guys. I'm just looking at, just wanted to pull some details to share with you what I am putting together. Uh, again, this is gonna be on the second channel because I just feel like it's a deep subject, but there are clues in what happened back then that we can kind of put in our back pocket to identify which of these assets are gonna be around, okay? 
because it was certain characteristics, certain features about these companies that made it that, you know, haven't changed, right? These things, they, they haven't changed. And if we find them in our projects that we're looking at now, I think that ensures our investment, right? Now, another example, and this one was funny, video games, okay? The video game industry witnessed a crash in 1983. Yeah, we had $3.2 billion worth of value in the video game space at the end of 1982. By 1985, that number was barely above $100 million. And when you look back at why that occurred, there was a brand new product that caught a lot of attention. It also created a lot of clones, a lot of duplicates that did not have the same amount of value. All of a sudden, centralized forces get involved, then they want to do the cash grab, and then Johnson & Johnson releases Tooth Invaders. So, that all reminded me of the Dogecoin scenario. 2021, we're entering the bull run. It's absolutely madness. We just had our, you know, and in my opinion, this is the closest thing to the Great Recession we've seen, but we just had our recession. This was 2020, but we're rallying now. 2021, Dogecoin is everywhere. Uh, Elon Musk is talking all about Dogecoin. And then all of a sudden we get the Saturday Night Live skit. And within 72 hours, the market tanked, <laughs> right? Strangely enough, once Johnson & Johnson relieved to, released Tooth Invaders, same thing happened for video games. Now, here's just another detail to layer on top of both storylines, right? Both scenarios here. After the Great Depression, AT&T pretty much cornered the market for the phones. Then you get Motorola, Ericsson, Nokia, names we're familiar with begin to emerge, 1970s. Motorola gives us that first big boy, you know, the big handheld. But it was, it was Japan though, who actually launched the first mobile cellular network. Okay? Now, well, bear with me. After the crash in 85, Nintendo, Japanese company, arose and pretty much changed the entire game. Now, the reason why that is so freaking interesting <laughs> is because for the longest time, Japan did not mess with crypto. Not publicly, they weren't talking about it. However, this year, okay? This year, not only has Japan reallowed the trading of foreign issued stable coins, their companies have worked with several blockchains in just in the last 12 months. I've covered a lot of them on this channel. But what I'm saying is, although history may not repeat, we know that it does rhyme. If Japan is re-entering this, this market at this time after the crash, I'm just saying, guys, okay? okay no, like I said, that's why. <laughs> that is all why. This is gonna be on the DHN Dodge channel, okay? And we're gonna, Thursday, I'm aiming for maybe Thursday, maybe Friday. We're gonna focus in on that stellar use case subject because I got your question, man. And it really just had me thinking and I wanted to come correct because that's an excellent subject to cover. It's the perfect segue. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna drop this video, the 1%, okay? Watch out for that title. And it's gonna lead into the stellar luminous joint. Okay, that's how we're doing it now. So yeah. Just wanted to give you guys an update. No, I haven't disappeared. I'm tinkering away because I love what I do, <laughs> regardless of what point of the market it is and how many people watch it. This, what I'm about to tell you in this video is going to blow your mind. And that's strictly what I want to do. That is my only objective. All right. So again, give me a little time. Give me a few minutes. I still want you to have a great day. As a matter of fact, let me let me just let me just. All right, pull up the message boards. See if we got some news on deck, right? Bitcoin traders hope 27K holds. Huh, wait, what is this? <laughs> Japan and Singapore lead Asia's crypto race. That's... Look, I'm just... <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm gonna use the second camera. Look, okay, so check this out. Uh, this is this is where I get the sauce from, right here, y'all. Okay, right here. I'm not. I wasn't joking. Joking. What does that say? Japan, Singapore, lead Asia's crypto race. It's South Korea lags. Like, y'all know I was whole. I was doing this whole thing, global adoption, global perspective for these reasons. I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what y'all getting on these other channels, man. But Jesus. Uh, let's see. Too late to buy Polygon. Matic shoots up 11%. Look, it's not too late. Look at that. New Hyperledger members include Deloitte, Norges Bank, Japan, CCP. <laughs> okay. I need to finish it. I need to finish that video. 